Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we are watching episode 19 of Free Ren and uh, I've been really excited kind of waiting for this one because um, this uh, this whole exam thing is very interesting and I'm very curious to see how all these groups are gonna work together to catch this bird which um, does not seem like it's gonna be very easy so let's uh, hop right into this shall we? Dude, even in their dreams, they're act interacting like they normally do. She's praising her. You can tell they're very, very close, which is super cute. That's kind of one of my favorite things about this show is how they openly show and display the the characters vulnerabilities and stuff man because it's kind of crazy if you think about it asking your tank like hey we're about to fight a dragon how you feeling and he's like i'm freaking terrified <laughs> it's just not what you want to hear but it's like of course he's scared he's about to fight a dragon you know what i mean like the characters in this show have so much depth it's 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 really good man It didn't even occur to me that, like, once you got your bird, that somebody else would try to take it. Huh. Is she gonna get disqualified for killing another mage again? I know Fern won't do it, but the other one might. Yo, who made these birds, bro? <laughs> like, how are these things allowed to exist? Were they, like, manufactured this way? Or are these, like, actual natural occurring creatures? Because that's terrifying. Just imagine if these things got pissed off and got released into the world. Wait, they do all of this without any mana at all? They're just naturally this strong? That's insane. So what's keeping them in the cage is what I want to know. What's special about these cages that are able to contain such a crazy, powerful creature? Most people wouldn't care about that, but I see that's information that I want to know. Like, you're supposed to catch these in some little wooden cage and that's supposed to be it? Like, what's, what's keeping them there? Well, I would assume they would still have to be able to move their wings in order to move that fast. So if it restrains their wings, then that should do the trick. Unless they can just break out of it. Oh, like those shitty firebenders from the Avatar, <laughs> that garbage movie, where they can, <laughs> they're firebenders, but they can't use fire unless fire's present. That was the dumbest shit ever. It's so stupid. <laughs> I'm a firebender, but I am completely useless unless there is fire around. Otherwise, I'm just a regular person. <laughs> See, we get to see their whole strategy meeting, which is kind of cool, but like Fern's group already caught theirs, and I want to know how they did it. It kind of sucks that they left that detail out, like they just have it, and then you're just supposed to be like, well, yeah, they're, they're good like that. I want to know how it happened. Oh, 
Oh boy. <laughs> oh man. This is going to get interesting. Alright, I'm excited now. Just the possibility of their groups kind of bumping into each other is very exciting. Think of that, man. Holy crap. This is why they're mages and I'm not. See, I could be a mage if I wasn't dumb and a potato, but see, sometimes it's just a card you're dealt. <laughs> Bro, she is pumped. She like, yes. This is exactly what I was waiting for. Oh man. Look how fast Fern is though. She's fast as hell, dude. Wh hold on, they're freezing the whole lake? What? Oh, so that's to prevent them from going to the lakes. They'll stay away. That's what she was saying. That's why she kept saying that. It's because, like, now that there was a huge concentration of mana there, they're not going to go anywhere near it. Interesting. So they're lowering, they're lowering the area that you would have to search. That lake is huge. So trying to search around the lake for the birds is, is a pain in the ass because it's massive. But now that the entire lake is basically infused with mana and frozen, they, they are forced to look for smaller water sources now. Yeah, he's got some experience, man. That old dude, man, he knows some shit. He's like, yeah, we gotta... They definitely got something in motion. We just don't know what it is yet, but ain't no way that they put on that huge display for nothing. I can see why maybe not so many people are like jumping at the opportunity to take these exams when you can just die. You know what I mean? Like, I, I know they said that, you know, you people can die during these, but it's crazy how they're just, it's just over for them. Like what she said, what he said makes sense in the sense that they feel like if you're not qualified to be a first class mage, you're not qualified to live. It's an exam. It's to see if you're qualified to move up to the next level of, of you know, proper mage. So death shouldn't be the consequence to not being good enough. I mean, to be realistic, it is the consequence of not being good enough in the real world. Like if you're if you're a mage and you're out and you go above your means, you die in this world. That's how it works. But like this is just an exam. It's just to test your ability. I feel like death is kind of harsh. interesting that's a that's a, a very interesting viewpoint it's not like he's really incorrect about that either
are they infusing all of the uh, local water sources with mana? That's what it seems like they're doing. Because she said as long as her mana is pre-infused into the water, she can control it. It just has to either be nearby or already infused with her mana. That's I mean, that's fucking tedious. I mean, it it's it is a guaranteed way to find a bird, period. At the end of the day, it is 100%. This is how much time we have left. Instead of looking for the birds, we can set up a guaranteed way for them to find us. That seems like a much better use of your time, honestly. So yeah, it, it fucking works. That's kind of crazy that there are mages that can, like some mages, they all have magic and they all can use mana, but some mages can't sense it. Or maybe they just can't sense it as good as others. But damn, she can, she can suppress her mana almost to nothingness. Everybody's been laying in wait for this moment. At least at least some of the groups had to have caught on. <laughs> well, I mean, she was trained by a relic, so that's kind of funny. That she says free rent frights like a grandma. <laughs> oh my god, that's that's kind of funny. She fights like free Ren does, which apparently is like a grandma. Interesting. <laughs> oh, Fern. I, oh, man. I really need to. We need to understand the full extent of her ability because she is like, she's got some stuff, man, that they ain't really showing us. Yeah, I don't know about that. Considering she literally just kills people. I don't I don't I don't think <laughs> I don't think that's a problem for her at all. Honestly, I think that's right up her alley, actually. Not only that, like there's this sense of like nobility and honor, you know, when it comes to magic and how you're supposed to use it and all that good stuff, you know, proper etiquette or whatever, like Fern wasn't taught that. She was taught to be as underhanded as possible, really. Like, do what it takes to win. Suppress your magic. Do whatever, you know, like. So, I, I don't know, man. This is going to be interesting. I'm curious to see how this turns out next episode, though. We're really getting into it. Everybody's starting to actually fight now. But, yeah. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I definitely enjoyed making it, as usual. Uh, I'll see you guys on the next one.